Yo, what is up, everybody? And welcome back to another Madden 24 online game. Today we got the Kansas City Chiefs and the Miami Dolphins who just played in Wild Card Weekend. And man, the Dolphins came out flat for the second year in a row on Wild Card Weekend. Meanwhile, the defending champ, Kansas City Chiefs, they move on. A far from perfect game. Frigid conditions in this one, man. It was feel like temperature of negative 20 something, even maybe like negative 30. Winds swirling all throughout the game. So, you know, just horrific weather to sit in for the game to play in during the game at one point Patrick Mahomes' helmet literally cracked I don't know if I've seen that especially from a quarterback before but uh the Chiefs just slowly and surely put away the Miami Dolphins but you know I felt like the Dolphins offensive ineptitude was really the main story of the game because you know the whole talk of the town is about how high powered this Dolphins offense is how much speed they got and you know, Miami, when they cannot establish the ground game, it's scary what happens to their offense. And, you know, they weren't able to get those big chunk plays with Waddle and Mostert that they've been able to get all year long. You know, there's no shot that Jalen Waddle was 100% going into that game. He's definitely still feeling the lingering effects of whatever injuries that he had. And, you know, he pretty much got Tyreek Hill out there, which worked for a little bit. Tyreek had that one driver. He caught two passes, the long touchdown. And it was like, okay, the Dolphins might have a chance. And the Chiefs had a lot of missed opportunities in that game. A couple of missed deep shots to McCall Hardman. A lot of Harrison Bucker field goals instead of finishing drives off with touchdowns. But Kansas City went on a long seven-minute drive during the third quarter that just really sucked the life out of the Miami Dolphins. It had some roughing the passer penalties that extended the drive. And eventually get, they get the touchdown with Isaiah Pacheco. And, yeah, I mean, Kansas City started the game off pretty well. They had the big run by Pacheco, the touchdown by Rasheed Rice. From there, the game kind of slowed down, which you kind of expected in this game. At some point, the offenses would get stymied given the horrific playing conditions that were going on. But... I mean, the Dolphins just never really found anything besides that one drive, the two-play touchdown drive with Tyreek Hill. Otherwise, uh, you know, they just, like I said, they weren't able to run the ball, and they weren't able to get anything off of that. Uh, you know, Tua did not really look too good, all things considered today. It just, you know, when the Dolphins couldn't get their ground game going, their passing game, it just looked like nothing was really there for them. And, you know, Miami is pretty banged up entering this game. Though, you know, you never want to use injuries as an excuse. I mean, this Miami Dolphins team has a lot of key injuries, especially to the defense heading into this game. A lot of pass rushers down, Bradley Chubb, Jalen Phillips, and all of that. And, you know, the Dolphins tried to blitz some in the game to try to negate that, but that didn't really work. The Chiefs were always able to find their one-on-ones in the right situations. Mahomes was doing Mahomes-like stuff. Uh, he had a pretty solid game. Nothing crazy, right? But... And it could have been better if, you know, you know, he had some of those usual Kansas City Chief drops. Kelsey had a couple of drops in the game. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, all you're trying to do is win the game. And the Chiefs survive in advance. It's wildcard weekend. When you're a team like Kansas City, wildcard weekend is just like, all right, now who do we got next after that? But, you know, you do survive this. This Dolphins team could have been scary, but... Uh, they came out flat-footed. This is the second year in a row that the Dolphins come out flat-footed on Wild Card Weekend. At least last season, you had Skyler Thompson playing quarterback, so there really were no expectations. This year, even though you had the injuries, it's not like Kansas City was setting the world on fire in the second half of the year. So you had at least a puncher's chance to make some noise in this game, and it just never materialized. And you know, you're really going to have to go back to the drawing board for the Miami Dolphins because, I mean, the story with them is, yeah, you could put up all those points against the Broncos and all that, but can you put up the points against the NFL's elite? Is that offense for real or is it just, you know, beating the bottom of the barrel? Which I, I, I love Mike McDaniels as a head coach. I love what he's doing there. But, uh, you know, some of what they're doing, they're going to have to look – themselves in the mirror going into the offseason because no matter which way you look at it an offense like this like I'm doing this as the game is still going on just four minutes left I'm watching Tua throw an incompletion on first down having seven points in a playoff game like that is you know you can't win playoff games simply like that especially if you're going to go against Patrick Mahomes at some point you know you kind of take the pressure off of Kansas City take the pressure off of that offense where it's like all right we don't have to do everything because you kind of want to make Mahomes feel like he has to do everything like in that Raiders game on Christmas Day where it's like Mahomes Holmes, you know, he was running for like 500 yards all around town, right, trying to buy time to do something. He, he never felt like he had to extend himself to that length. He extended himself to some lanes, but not too much. And, yeah, 
like I said, for the Chiefs, it's a good win for them. And look, when you have Mahomes and you have this defense playing as well as it did, because Kansas City's defense, like, has been playing very well all season long. At this point, it's a known storyline. That defense is legit. And, you know, it comes at the sacrifice of them not having some offensive weapons. It's just the way they built their team. It's kind of like the Brady years in the second half of that Patriots dynasty where, you know, or even the first half at some point, he's strong like Troy Brown, stuff like that, right? It's just like, yeah, we're putting our main investments elsewhere, betting on our really good quarterback to get it done when it matters, which is a risk for sure. It's not exactly what you want to do, but... I mean, look, they won a Super Bowl last year, kind of riding this formula, and now more so riding the defense. We'll see how far they can go. The Chiefs are the, I believe, the four seed. So we'll see who they end up playing. You got the Houston Texans, who also won this week, beating the Cleveland Browns. And uh, that game was just, once again, man, shout out to C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud is him out there. <laughs> you just, you cannot deny the fact that C.J. Stroud is truly him out there. And week after week, he impresses. He puts up numbers that we haven't really seen from a rookie before in the NFL. And it's just like, Stroud's not a good rookie. He's a really good quarterback, period. And I think the thing that impresses me the most about C.J. Stroud, and we've seen it a lot in the last couple of weeks, is how calm he is under pressure. That man has like a 99 throw under pressure rating where like he can hold that ball until the very last second. You know you're going to take that hit. And he puts it on the money in a tight window. And it's such a hard throw. He's not, not exactly as his feet set. His mechanics aren't exactly, you know, fundamental in those situations. But he's able to make any throw in any situation. The only real misfire from Stroud, he had one that went to, like, double coverage early in the game on a third down. But he did have the miss downfield shot. I believe it was to Nico Collins that would have been six points, but he overthrew him by, like, ten yards. But otherwise, you cannot argue about what, uh, you know, Stroud did once again today. And the Texans are going to be a tough out. They're going to be a tough out for sure. D'Amico Ryans has that defense playing well for sure. And the offense, uh, bought, uh, Slowick, I, I forget what his, uh, the offensive coordinator's name, Slowick, he's been doing really good this year, and Stroud is just kind of nice. Uh, Devin Singletary is a serviceable running back. For whatever reason, Damian Pierce is not the guy he was in his rookie year, but Devin Singletary has been a really good pickup for them, and, um, you know, he had some good runs today. And, you know, the receiving core, you got Nico Collins, but like an absolute beast out there. A little bit of Noah Brown, a little bit of uh, Bobby Trees out there, Robert Woods is all it takes, and, you know, defense, you know, it's – it's, it's, a, it's a solid team that could compete with anybody. You don't think they're going to be the favorites, the Houston Texans, if they have to go, you know, play Baltimore, right? Because at this point, they're on pace to uh, be in a four versus one matchup, I believe, of uh, Ravens versus Texans in round two. You really don't want to see that, but uh, <laughs> hey, man, that's what you get when you get this far, and it's a great... Uh, you know, it's a great point for C.J. Stroud to learn in his rookie year to get that playoff experience right away and get thrown into the fire, man. And, you know, it, it's almost like Mahomes' redshirt rookie year where it's like, yeah, he got thrown into the AFC Championship game against Tom Brady immediately, and he proved that he was everything and then some, and Stroud's kind of doing the same thing. For the Cleveland Browns, it's just, man, they got as far as they could have with that team a lot of key injuries you know you don't have Nick Chubb you don't got the Sean Watson you know a couple of injuries on both sides Denzel Ward got hurt in practice I mean it's like man the injury bug is just following us at that point but like I said like both teams have injuries to blame but you don't want to blame your losses on injury you want to look yourself in the mirror and be like all right like we have to figure out why we lost because the same thing could happen next year with a fully healthy squad and um, I mean, for the Browns, it's pretty simple that Joe Flacco football, it give it, then it take it. Because, yeah, Joe Flacco can throw a lot of dots, but he also is good for an interception a game. He's been good for an interception a game since he took over, and um, his interceptions were very costly. He had one where it looked like he was trying to throw it out of bounds. Steven Nelson got the interception, took it a long ways back for six. And then the next throw on the fourth down was just a bad read thrown to Christian Harris, who also got the pick six. And even Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper, you know, had that huge game against the Texans a couple of weeks ago, going for like 250 yards, but... He didn't look 100% out there. 
was still on the field, though, at the end of the day. So, I mean, for the Cleveland Browns, they don't really have too much cap space to improve that team. The Deshaun Watson contract really locks them up. And at this point, you're kind of just going to turn the team back to Deshaun Watson and hope he can rediscover some of his Houston magic. Unless C.J. Stroud took all of that magic. Who knows? But, you know, you got you to gotta give it to Watson because he's getting paid all this money and you don't really have uh, money to give elsewhere. I mean, at this point, Joe Flacco might demand, demand a big contract from – I mean, not a big contract, but like a pretty – like maybe like a 10 mil a year contract from somebody to at least be the highest paid backup on a team. Because Joe Flacco, like, yeah, he didn't look like he still has some really good throws out there. At the end of the day, he can still play quarterback, at least at a backup level, at a high backup level, if not at a starter level. He played a lot better than a lot of starters this year. Like, I'm sure the Atlanta Falcons would have liked to have Joe Flacco over the Ritter Heineke carousel that they were riding with Arthur Smith. But. Yeah, and as far and then the Cleveland Browns, like I said, health they got to get their team healthy. But defensively, that was the that was the real letdown for the Cleveland Browns. Uh, that was not supposed to be the letdown for the Cleveland Browns. They came into the game averaging like 270 yards allowed per game, and they allowed that much yardage in the first half alone. Like Brevin Jordan's out here breaking ankles and you know running away from the pack. That shouldn't really happen. You got bust in the must multiple busts in the coverage. Dude's just way downfield, wide open and. Yeah, I don't know what happened. That Jim Schwartz defense was playing good all year long, and they fell apart the worst time possible. So uh, that is unfortunate, but they got to figure out what happened because this Browns team, they have talent. They are going to bring a lot of those guys back. And, you know, we'll see what, uh, you know, hopefully Nick Chubb can recover to be back in time for next season because I'm sure having Nick Chubb can really help settle down offense. And you can tell. I mean, Kareem Hunt's all right, but, uh, I mean, Jerome Ford is not really getting it done out there. You have Nick Chubb, who's one of the best running backs. You know, that definitely makes a difference. But who knows if Chubb can even get anywhere close to the level that he was. Those ACL injuries. Yeah, athletes have recovered from that a lot better in the past couple of years. But it's still a devastating injury for any running back to get. So hopefully Nick Chubb can come back. And we'll see what happens otherwise with the Cleveland Browns. But the Texans are going to move on. The Chiefs are going to move on. And we'll get to see two games tomorrow. Cowboys, Packers, and the, uh, the Matthew Stafford return game. The Jared Goff revenge game. Whichever angle you want to look at it at two very interesting games tomorrow I really do think the the Packers are a better team than people give them credit for like, I think that's a good roster like honestly I don't think there what there is too much of a drop off from what Aaron Rodgers brought last year to what Jordan Love has brought in the second half of this season and that's no disrespect to Aaron Rodgers. I just think Jordan Love's playing pretty good right now. Um, you know, that defense is pretty solid out there. Hopefully they can have their linebackers healthy and stuff like that for that game. I know Devondre Campbell's been banged up the past couple of weeks. You know, Jair should be ready to go as long as he doesn't walk on the field during the coin toss. So should be a good game. But uh, that is going to do it for this video, man. It's going to do it for this. Uh, I did play an online game this time. So shout out to the people who suggested this. Um, no CPU sim. We actually played an online game. So shout out to my opponent, GG to him. If you guys want to play in any of these uh, games in the future for these videos, hop in my Discord. We just made the Discord. And, uh, you know, I'm going to ask people in that Discord, you know, when I'm ready to play these games, you know, who's available and stuff like that. So hop in the Discord. We're, we're having a fun time in there. Just made it yesterday. But, yeah, that's going to do it for the video. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed this. Subscribe for more Madden 24 gameplays. I will catch you guys next time. Thank you, as always, for watching.